Good morning. Today is Sunday, the 15th day of Tevis. And we begin today chapter 10 in Itania. Now, in this chapter, Walter Rebbe begins the explanation of what is a tzaddik. And there are two levels of tzaddik. As you remember, in the beginning of the Tanya, we learned about the, the tzaddik, the benani, and the rasha. The tzaddik is the righteous person. Benani is the mid, medium person, the intermediate. And the rasha is the wicked person. In this few chat, this the next three chapters is going to elaborate in details more. What is a tzaddik? And that's in chapter 10, what we begin today. In the next chapter, chapter 11, is going to describe what is a rasha, the wicked person, the different levels. And chapter 12 is going to explain what is the benini. What is the average person, the intermediate person? So, as we'll, as we'll see that at the level of a tzaddik, a righteous person, the way it describes here in Tanya, is a very, very high level. Seems like it's totally out of reach for to anyone, or to the vast majority of people, because here we're talking about the level of a person who is completely pure, eliminated, not even desires to do any any bad. And the question is, why are we learning about it? Why is the Alter Rebbe telling us about the tzaddik if this is something that is really not something that um, is in our ability to achieve? And of course, the answer is that really a little bit, a tiny bit of the tzaddik is in each and every one of us. You know, we learned about this uh, this week's parsha about Yosef at tzaddik. Yosef reached a very, very high level. And Hashem gave Yosef the ability to be connected with God in a way that the world doesn't mean anything. Not to give any place, any room for the worldly things, and to be con completely connected to Hashem. And giving this to Yosef, in a way, also empowers each and every one of us that when we have our challenges, we are able to face those challenges knowing that deep inside us lies a tiny tzaddik. And even though it will not be able to completely transform ourselves to, to the level of a tzaddik, at least not uh, at this stage, Hopefully, Mashiach is coming very soon, and that's going to happen to each and every one. But a little bit of that is helps us to achieve the level that we can achieve, knowing that the, deep inside us, we do have that essence of what the tzaddik is. So back to the chapter, what, is, what, is, what the Al-Tareb is going to explain now, is that two levels of the tzaddik, the tzaddik that is generally divided into two, you have the complete tzaddik and the incomplete tzaddik. What is the difference between the complete tzaddik and the incomplete tzaddik? So, the al Rabbi is going to say that the tzaddik is one who not only is in full control of his thought, speech, and action, he doesn't do any doesn't even think of doing anything bad. He doesn't even have evil thoughts, but also he doesn't have the desire. He doesn't have the desire to do anything which is against the will of Hashem. However, the, if the, there is the first level, the incomplete tzaddik, basically he took control over his left side of the heart, as we explained last uh, lesson, what is the left side of the heart? That the left side of the heart represents the passion, the the, the is the animal soul that lies in the left side of the heart. 
So he took over, the tzaddik took over this in full control that it doesn't have any desires to do anything bad. But in the same time, it didn't transform him. That the, that the animal soul itself should want to do godly things. That the incomplete tzaddik did not achieve. The complete tzaddik is one who not only conquered this left side of the heart, and he doesn't have bad desires, but also he, the, his love to Hashem, to God, overflows to the point that the animal side of him and the animal soul of his also senses the good of godliness. And he also wants godliness with his left side as well. That is the complete tzaddik. You completely transformed it. Because there's one thing that the, the animal soul has that the godless soul doesn't have. And that is the, the passion. The passion, and the passion itself is not a bad thing. Except that naturally, what is the passion used for? For things of this world. But when the tzaddik experiences and he lives a life of full, and, and we spoke about the love of the tzaddik, that there are two types of love. There is love, the passionate love, and there is the calm love, the love like water. The passionate love is a lower level of love. It's a love that you love something that you did not get yet, something you want to get. You're in loss. You want to you, you want to connect to to something which you realize is so good and you love and you're passionate about it. This is the 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 lower level of love. The higher level of love that the tzaddik achieved, the complete tzaddik, is the love of ahava betanugim, love in delight, that you already achieved that place. And your heart becomes so overflowed with love that it spills over, as the Alter Rebbe said, it spills over to the left side of your heart. That the animal soul also now is transformed and wants to use its ability, its engine of passion into the godly thing. So let's look inside the way the Alter Rebbe explains. Chapter 10 in the Tanya. Vehine says the Alter Rebbe. Kesher Odom Magbir Nafshoi Her Likis Vanilcham Kol Kachim Abahamis. When a person causes his divine soul to prevail over the animal soul, Vanilcham Kol Kachim Abahamis, and when he wages war against the animal soul so much. To the extent that he banishes and eradicates its evil from its abode within him, namely the left part of the heart that we explained last week. As it is written, and you shall eradicate the evil from your midst. This is obviously a, a verse that talks about, the Torah tells us about the Beisdin, the rabbinical court has to eradicate all evil from their midst, from our midst. But in, by extension, this also applies to each and every person. That each and every person needs to eradicate and eliminate the evil from our midst. However, as to one who achieves this goal, but finds that the evil has nevertheless not actually been converted into good. In which case, his entire capacity for desire would now be directed only towards good and holiness, since within him, this is not the case in the in the 
If a person does not achieve that complete transformation, then that person is called a tzaddik she'enei gamo, an incomplete tzaddik. Nikro tzaddik she'enei gamo, he is called an incomplete tzaddik. Also, as you remember the first chapter, we said this incomplete tzaddik has also another title, and that is called with koem v'tzaddik, tzaddik v'raloi. He's also called a tzaddik who knows evil, or the evil is to him, literally. What does that mean? Which means that some vestige of evil still lingers within him in the left part of his heart. However, except that it finds no expression at all, not even in evil desires, because the evil, by reason of, his, of, his, of its minuteness, is, subju is subjugated and nullified by the good and cannot therefore be sensed. That is called Tzadik Veraloi. Tzadik Veraloi, we said, by when we're saying a tzaddik gomer, a complete tzaddik, and tzaddik she'ene gomer, incomplete tzaddik. Now we're talking about the incomplete tzaddik. Here we're talking about the level of love to Hashem. That the level of love to Hashem of the incomplete tzaddik is not the same as his love of the complete tzaddik. When we're talking about the other title, tzaddik veraloi, tzaddik vetoivloi, tzaddik that has some bad and tzaddik that doesn't have, that has only good. That is, we're talking about in terms of where is the animal soul, what is the state of the animal soul by him. The tzaddik veraloi, the tzaddik that has get a good, bad to him, it means that, it, that the animal soul is not completely transformed, it still has its minute level of evil, but that, may, that evil that is so, is so minute that it's completely subjugated and it does not have does not express itself not even not only thought speech and action but even a desire doesn't come up to this tzaddik this tzaddik has because it's completely he's completely in control not of only of his thought but even on the very desire and his heart and everything is 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 the tzaddik eradicated this evil to the point that it does not express itself not even in a desire. The question is now, but how will you be able to differentiate? How do you know this tzaddik that has no desire whatsoever to do bad? So maybe this tzaddik is complete, maybe completely eliminated the evil. How do you know that is to differentiate between him and the complete tzaddik? So this Dal Tareb is going to address now. It says, Velochei nid meloi, ki vayagosheyu vayelech loi, kuloi legamri. Hence, he, the tzaddik, he may imagine that he has driven it out and it has, it has quite disappeared. But this is not the case. By the incomplete tzaddik, it, he did not completely drive out the evil. Why? Aval be'em, as he says, ilu cholach ve'olach lo'i legamre, kol rasha bo yoye nefach le'tev mamash. In truth, however, as all the evil in him departed and disappeared, it would have been converted into actual good. So, and again, the question is, how do you know to defend it? How do you, maybe it is converted into good. That's why it doesn't desire anything bad. So the Altareb is going to explain that this is dependent when you realize what type of love to Hashem you have. If the love to Hashem that you have is a passionate love, I mean, you didn't yet reach the level of the love in the light, that means that your 
despised to the evil is not complete. And the, and the love did not overflow to the other side of the heart, to the left side of the heart, to have the, the evil also, the, 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 um, the animal soul also passionately love Hashem. And that's what he's going to explain. And the explanation of the matter is as follows. To understand why the incomplete tzaddik is indeed incomplete is by first understanding what is a complete tzaddik. When you see where is the complete tzaddik, what does he have, then we know what the incomplete tzaddik is missing. Says the Rebbe, ki hinei tzaddik gamu shenepach harashole letoiv velochein nikro tzaddik v'toivli. A complete tzaddik in whom the evil has been converted into good, and who he is consequently called a tzaddik who knows only good. The tzaddik v'toivli has only good. How does, how does he reach that level? He says, Hu al sabgodim atzoim legamre mehara. This is attained, he attained this level by completely removing his filthy garments from evil. What does it mean the filthy garments? The garments of the animal soul. The soul, the, the animal soul has its passion, has its drive. But the question of what the passion is for, and the, the garments, the filthy garments, is the garments of this materialistic world. This means he despises utterly the pleasures of this world. That doesn't mean that he despises food. He despises uh, other things of this world. He's talking about despising the pleasures of this world. <coughs> the, the fact that this brings you pleasure, <coughs> that the materialistic things brings you pleasure, this is something that a tzaddik despises because by him, what pleasure is only God, God godliness. <coughs> So by the so but this tzaddik is despises the pleasures of, of this world, finding it repugnant. To derive from them that <clears throat> that pleasure which or their which other people derive. Namely, the pleasure of merely gratifying <clears throat> the physical appetite instead of using his pleasure towards the service of God. So in other words, the pleasure itself is not a bad thing. When the pleasure is used in for godly things, for example, when you eat the, on Shabbos, on Shabbos, <clears throat> by a tzaddik, when he enjoys the food on Shabbos, for him it's a real work of getting the, to be able to use the enjoyment for Hashem. In other words, the tzaddik completely despises anything which is selfish pleasures, if it's not godly. So the tzaddik needs to be instructed and told that on Shabbos, <clears throat> make sure to enjoy, to have pleasures, because the pleasure on Shabbos is a good thing. A tzaddik needs to have that instruction. The ordinary person does not need to be instructed to make sure that we have pleasure, because we do have pleasure naturally. And in fact, our pleasure, even on Shabbos, is worldly pleasures. We need to make sure that a pleasure should be godly. And that is the work that we need to do on Shabbos. That's why there's a saying by the, I think the, the son of the Alter Rebbe once said that in those mitzvahs that are connected with physical, with physical pleasures, we don't need to go to be mehada, to go 
be exemplary to do more than we need to. Because after all, the pleasures that we have is worldly pleasures. We may uh, convince ourselves, perhaps, that is to say to ourselves, oh, maybe this pleasure is not, we're doing it for God. But really, if you think about it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's your own selfish pleasures. That's a yes. And Shabbos, we need to enjoy ourselves to, in, in honor of Shabbos. But we don't have to be mehada. We don't have to go way and beyond what we need to do. We have pleasure. Because again, this pleasure that we have, it has the risk and has the danger to be misdirected into the wrong places and drag us down as the story with the Baal Shem Tov once. He told his students on the Shabbos table, the people, they were eating the troll in there and he told them to close their eyes and all of a sudden they saw a bull wearing a streimel eating cholent. So that means that Baal Shem Tov showed them that when they put themselves into the food, they became like the bull, like an animal. So even in Shabbos, we have to be careful with this. So that's why he says that tzaddik has no worries about this. The tzaddik despises material pleasure because that's not godly. So for him, he's, he's, he's so full in love with Hashem that he needs to be instructed in Shabbos to have some pleasure. But and again, this is this is the godly pleasure that he has. So that this is the complete tzaddik. Why? <clears throat> and he doesn't have any pleasure. Does not derive any pleasure from other things. He despises such pleasures, <clears throat> for they derive. They are derived from and receive their spiritual sustenance from the klipa and sitra achra from the other side. The very antithesis of, of holiness. The complete tzaddik utterly hates whatever is of the sitra achra. This is, this is one case of hate, which is... Uh, that, we, that is a positive hate. He doesn't hate people. He doesn't have, hate things. He, he hates the evil. He doesn't hate the people who do evil on the country. He loves everyone. He hates the evil within things. Anything which comes from the other side of the holiness, the tzaddik completely despises. The whole mushroom <clears throat> And he says, Machmas Why does he hate it so much? Because of his great love, a profound love of delight, and his superior degree of affection for God and his holiness. As mentioned above. Since they, the holiness and the clipper, are antithet antithetical. Antithetical. His love of God, therefore, evokes a commensurate degree of hatred for Sitra Acha. So the more love he has to Hashem, the more hate he has to something which, is, which negates God. Again, Kedersiv, as it says, that is, that it is written. Tachli sinos nesim le oivim hoyuli chakreni vedalavavi vigeman. So it is written. This is King David saying, I hate them with a consuming hatred, says King David, of those who oppose God. They have become enemies to me. Search me, he says to God. And know my heart. So this means by searching me and knowing how great his love of, of you, born in my heart, you will know how great is my hatred towards your enemies. For as stated, love is the measure of hate.
the more you love good, the more you will hate bad. Hence, according to the abundance of love towards God, so is the extent of hatred <coughs> towards the spiritual sitra acha, which nurtures the physical pleasures and the utter repugnance of the evil of physical pleasures. Because repugnance is as much the extent, the exact opposite of love as is hatred. So this is the, this is the Alter Rebbe says the sign of what is makes this tzaddik incomplete when he's not when his despise for the evil is not an utter despise. Yes, he cannot take it, but it's not really completely utterly repugnant of the of the evil. Think of a a piece of bread that is um, not very fresh and sometimes looks uh, even disgusting. You're despised. You can't touch it. You can't look at it. But the same, the same piece of bread, think about the people and the conditions in the Holocaust when there was nothing, nothing to eat. That that piece of bread that was disgusting would be the most, the, the dearest thing that you could ever think of. So obviously it shows that your disgust to this piece of bread is not, is not utterly disgusting. There is some, something which is good in this. And this is, this is the, the difference between the, the complete tzaddik and the incomplete tzaddik. The complete tzaddik has complete, utterly something which is completely you cannot even think about it. it. Doesn't even enter the mind. Doesn't even have to. Doesn't have to. Doesn't even have to convince himself that this is not good. It is. It is love to Hashem is so full. Is in his heart, and not only is this he despises the evil, something which is against God, but also it overflows into his left heart, and his left heart also becomes uh, completely in love with Hashem, and that will. Continue tomorrow, Mazat Hashem explaining the, the complete tzaddik. So thank you all for joining. You can take some questions if anyone has any questions now.